Hi, Nathan here again with another True Tech troubleshooting tutorial. In today's lesson, I'd like to talk about pop-up windows in Adobe Lifecycle and why I have chosen in my forms to avoid using them. First, let's show you the problem. Uh, we have a sample form here where um, there's a drop-down box, and on the user exiting the drop-down box, uh, different things happen. One of the things I have programmed in here in the if the user chooses the first option in the drop-down, um, a pop-up window comes up, and this would this is simulating a time when, um, if a user chooses a certain option, you want to give them a message or have them input custom text of some kind, and um, using pop-up windows is acceptable. But what you get here in Lifecycle is this warning JavaScript window. Since we're using JavaScript and we're telling JavaScript to do something on the exit event on the exit event of the drop down here, JavaScript is warning the user that um, code is being executed. And what this what this tells us is the, the developers at Adobe realize that malicious code may be launched from such events and so they're warning the user be careful you know a JavaScript uh, is, is running in the background here and you want to be be certain that you trust the, the developer uh, to not be trying to do something malicious to your computer and this warning is impossible to get rid of no matter what we do in our code if we look at our code here behind this drop-down if they choose the first uh, the first option this is the the message box JavaScript that that we're using and we want the message to say at the top of the window custom pop-up window and it does say that but we can't get rid of that warning JavaScript JavaScript window our custom pop-up window is there but it's only after this and that's embedded in in Adobe Live so I can't get rid of that and so for that reason I've chosen just to avoid using pop-ups altogether uh, because it it tends to scare the user when they see something like that, and especially if it's a novice computer user, they don't know what to do, and they're they're totally sidetracked from what I want the form uh, to lead them to do, uh, because they see that warning. And so, how do we do that? Well, also in this drop down, I have another set of code down here on option down here on option 23. I have another set of code that makes visible a subform called home confinement that currently has been hidden and so if you look over here on my hierarchy I have a subform called SF home confinement and the presence right now is hidden it's there it's it's waiting for the user to use but until the user chooses option number 23 in the drop down he never sees this and so it has the net effect of being a pop-up window and I'll demonstrate how, how it looks to the user so if he chooses in the drop-down the home confinement option this whole subform appears and it appears almost as if a pop-up has come up on the screen and he can make his optional choices here on the radio boxes and he can put in his various data that we're asking him to put and then when he clicks finish it's like clicking the OK button of a pop-up window and the customized text is entered into the, the text box here in the table that I have uh, based on the user input. And so let's say he uh, chooses some different options. Uh, he wants to do this. He wants to make this 10. Click finish. And the customized text is placed in there. Uh, based on what the user did and let's say he doesn't want to use that option at all he just uses that option well the pop-up doesn't appear at all so it is a the f it gives you the functionality of a pop-up by doing this but it avoids that nasty little JavaScript warning and it avoids using part of the the XFA logic model that apparently makes the Adobe developers a little squeamish uh, apparently they realize that uh, hackers and malicious coders could could use that area to do bad things so we want to avoid that altogether and not let our end users be affected by that so here a little bit more details on how I did this of course I have a drop down 
I have a table that expands. I have a header on the table and then a row uh, that can have multiple occurrences. And if you want to know how to do this, you need to watch the video on expanding tables. But the key here is the code behind uh, this combo box called CBO violation. And when CBO violation is exited, if we open our script window, on the exit event of this object, a few things happen. The value of, of the choice is put into a variable, and then we run this uh, big if statement, which is called a case switch in JavaScript, where depending on what option is chosen, option 0, option 1, option 2, all the way down, different text gets placed into this cell over here. But if, if the specific option is chosen, option number 23, which in, in this example is the home confinement option, then instead of just placing a value of text in this box, we want to make visible the home confinement subform. And so we can do that now here at design time and look at what, what it is. So it's th here it is. It's, it's there the whole time waiting for somebody to do something with it. But since we've hidden it uh, at design time and only allowed it to be visible during this one scenario, uh, it can remain there forever and nobody is, not, is, is the wiser unless they actually choose it. So it, it has the effect of a pop-up. A pop-up in any kind of Windows application is always there. It's always embedded in the software, but you don't see it until uh, the conditions are right for it to pop up. And so that's what this is. This is basically a pop-up subform, we could call it. And so all of my uh, elements in the subform do different things. And then, of course, there's code behind the click event of this command button here. And that takes and does a whole other bunch of switching and customizing so that when, uh, depending on what radio buttons are chosen and what's put in some of these other text fields, a certain kind of text then is placed, just like in the other options of the drop-down, is placed in this cell. And then, of course, the last thing that happens is the subform is rehidden so that to the user, the net effect is the pop-up goes away. So let's watch it again. Uh, first, we need to make sure at design time here, we hide that subform. So as we're running the form, user chooses one of the options. Uh, that don't have a pop-up associated with it. Uh, everything happens like it's supposed to, but then if they choose the specific home confinement, then uh, this part of the form comes up. We can make special choices. We can put in custom text. And when we click Finish, the same thing happens as happens in these, except we're using a specific data input by the user further. And so that's how to do it. That's how to get rid of pop-ups in Adobe Lifecycle. Continue to ask questions on YouTube and leave your comments. Uh, I'd love to hear from people who subscribe. And continue to check the blog, truetechtroubleshooting.blogspot.com. And remember, IT problems are usually simple, but they are never easy. Thanks, and we'll see you next time.